<clears throat> okay, so for a long time my my camera didn't work, and I've already oh my god, I've promised so many videos to people, and so on so many topics. Um, you brought up so many of them: the hypostatic union, the Trinity. Um, I I actually have them uh, written down in the. Uh, I actually wound up sending a message to somebody with those just read, written out, so they're going to be confused as hell, and they just see a list of words, <laughs> list of just topics that I had. Um, and then I also I just remembered I gotta explain the, the claim we hold the highest view of scripture, um, but this this one is going to be about um, hell, um, and our view of that. Um, Basically, you every person would be responsible for um, hell. Again, hell is a pagan Nordic goddess, um, and the the ideas are just uh, that are some of the things that are associated with it. The basically like the view of Dante's Inferno or the, the cartoons with you know there's a there's some lava and then there's these demons jumping around with pitchforks and the devil has horns and he's red and he's a monster and he's got a bifurcated tail he may have hooves and, and all this other weird kind of stuff and the devil's red um the devil in orthodoxy the only icon that he's in um, is the harrowing of hell, and he's an old man, and he's bound uh, by his hands and feet. I think he's there's actually a string of ties, like hog tied, and all there's all of these broken locks on the bottom. And the gates of the gates of hell are broken, but as you know, there's. There are four. There's four words that I can think of right off the bat that are used for hell, um, or that are translated as hell. Uh, then we have all these different descriptions and analogies, and uh, how do they all? What does it all mean? Well, we believe all souls go back to God. And they say judgment. Um, You know, depart. What is that? In the Book of Revelation, is something is depart from me into everlasting fire. But um, focusing on what Christ actually said about um, the views of the afterlife, it was just bothering me half open, and it was just out of the corner of my. Eye. Um, so all souls go back to God, and the imagery we're given of God is. It's the Holy Spirit descending as fire. Or we see it as, uh, we can see in John, the positive thing that we can, because we use apophatic reasoning, or apophatic terms. God is unknowable, God is uh, unseeable, God is unthinkable, God is beyond imagination, beyond the bounds of the universe, beyond space and time. You know, God is, uh, all these, just the negative, the, the negative aspects, because what is God? We don't know. We've been given little. So we've been told our relationship to Him, the Trinity, what has been revealed. That's all we can say. We can't say, you know, these exact, real exacting things. <clears throat> um, but we can know Him. I think uh, one of the greatest things um, that I heard, and this was from a book that was written, it was written in the West after the Great Schism. And it um, it said that it's actually called a cloud of annoyance. Is that uh, when we try to get to God with our intellect, a cloud of unknowing descends, and we can't break through that barrier with our intellect. So we must ascend to God with love and in our heart. And only when we ascend to God with love that um, that we can penetrate the cloud of unknowing. And I think that's pretty accurate. But okay, so God is love, and then God is compared to fire. So, um, and 
you know, with fire and spirit and all this kind of stuff. So if you, being in the presence of love and absolutely loving it is heaven. Being in the presence of love and absolutely hating it is hell. And to a degree you can be in hell on earth or you can be a part of the kingdom of heaven on earth when the kingdom of heaven is at hand, it's right here. You can be experienced in the liturgy. Uh, the book of Revelations is basically a description of the liturgy. Um, the cloud of witnesses being the saints. The, I mean, there's so many comparisons. I actually think it was somebody that's a book of signs and symbols and it's primarily written about the liturgy. I think that's absolutely the case. Um, that if you were to go to an Orthodox liturgy for, I don't know, minimum of eight times, you know, it's a, uh, every Sunday for two months. I think it would be ridiculously clear after you read the um, book of Revelations. Anyway, um, if, and we're told we're given analogies, you know, that of the refining fire of it's either going to be you're going to be burned up like chaff, or uh, the refining fire will come on the silver with dross that's going to test all things. Um, so we're going to be tested by by fire uh, how this is another thing the western view of how our God commands you know uh, I mean we're taught, told uh, hell is darkness but with fire how is, uh, the Eastern Orthodox view pretty much shows that that it's um, it's darkness because you're in you're not you are turned away from God you are you have basically you know, it's it's your position that can that makes it heaven or hell, and it's torment or wailing and gnashing of teeth. Uh, they will be tormented. These are the words that are used. Well, if God is good, and God is love, how would people be? T I mean, if they were sent down to a pit and cast off and just thrown, you know, thrown into somewhere where it's totally opposite of what heaven is and they're being tortured by these demons and they're you know being eaten alive or stabbed with pitchforks and God's looking down on this after the resurrection and allowing all of this it's not I mean we couldn't be saying all these things about God uh, but if you're in the presence of God and you're tormented by it if you cannot stand it if that's the inevitable place to go if the incarnation if Adam Second, if the first Adam brought sin in this world through disobedience, and the second Adam being Christ, um, and basically severed humanity from God, this is what the first Adam did, and the second Adam came into this world and in, through obedience uh, brought life, conquered death, and now is pulling all of the cosmos back to God, pulling everything. That, that that was the point in time where it just like cracked and shifted all all the events are now pulling back towards God. And the kingdom of heaven is established on earth and we can get into and experience it um, and go towards it. Well, everything is pulled back to God. What about the rapists, people filled with hate, horrible racists, murderers, child molesters? When they get to God, it's going to be... <laughs> They're standing in the presence of God and they've got all this horror and sin and they haven't relied on God's mercy, asked forgiveness, done what they could to walk towards God. Well, it's going to be horrible. And it's because it's 100% because of what they did. Um, infants, I think it's all the infants go right back to God. I don't know what they would, how they could commit sin. You say, oh, well, then they're lucky. Um, Again, they're deprived of experiencing long life, experiencing a lot of the joys. Because in a lot of the joys in life, we also connect with God. Um, and <clears throat> <clears throat> I don't know, maybe somebody could believe in reincarnation or something. Like that. that would just seem strange to me. But um, 
And just to, to say that, that might be a cop-out, which the Orthodox Church doesn't say that, but I, I don't know if somebody's going to make up an answer like that. Uh, so all these people go back to God. This is where purgatory had started from, the river of fire. This is where, it, it's also called the river of fire. I'll try to find the article and send it to you or send a link to it to you. Um, and you might want to check out uh, All Saints Monastery, but... Uh, This is where purgatory had come from because then later on the Latin West, the Roman Catholic Church, uh, divided these up into different categories. And if you're a Christian and you're going towards God, but you're not, I mean, you're not yet, uh, you still have a lot of things that are on you or you know, you're not perfect or whatever, and you're going towards God, If you want, when you're entering into heaven, these things are just being like, it's the dross coming off the silver. It's the refining. Because that's what we're told it's going to be like. And you either refine yourself in this life, or if you start on that journey late and you get cut short, uh, the journey's going to continue. It's not all God stops or everything is stagnant in heaven or static. There's no growth. This idea that we get to we get to the next life and be with God and we're just static or then God just has us do we're just totally selfish in the kingdom of heaven which is foolishness oh I want to ride on a magical horse through a land of this and that and have sex with all the virgins I can or sex with all the women I can I mean this is I don't know what people are thinking about because okay you're gonna be with the you're gonna be with God in the kingdom of God it's not what you want it's the it's the proper way of things. It's reuniting to God, so it's this refining fire. So purgatory in the Catholic view would be like a suburb of heaven, which they kind of. But when when they divided it, it was it kind of stepped away from uh, Eastern Orthodoxy. But in the early definitions, I think Gregory the Great was just was the first person to use the term purgatory. And okay, not everybody in the <laughs> Actually, no single person in the church is infallible except Christ. Um, he used this term. can understand what he's talking about when he's saying things, you know, when he's trying to tell, you know, the West about this and, you know, say, well, there's, you're still, you're still going to go through sanctification after, after, I think that's the word, the Protestant, you're still going to go through that regardless because you're going to God. The closer you get to God, the closer, the more, basically, that you, uh, Become more Christ-like, and it's an action. It's not torture or punishment. It might be you're changing. So I don't know. Uh, I'd say growth pains, but you're shedding the selfishness of self or something. So in orthodoxy, yeah, there can, you can grow toward. There can be more growth towards God. That's yes. Um, but when the Catholics took that and had, pur had paradise, purgatory, and inferno, or whatever, and I'm using Dante's terms, but um, that's kind of how that developed. Uh, now, if you see that as all, all people go back to God, all humanity goes back to all, hey, all creation goes back to God, um, we're told the world is going to be renewed, and we're told uh, of a resurrection, bodily resurrection. We're told of that in the presence of God. And we're given all these figurative things of judgment in the book of Revelations, which makes I think that's odd. So Christ is going to come back, and then humanity is going to wage war against them. It, 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 to put all these in, because it says it's, it's a book of signs and symbols, right? Uh, but no, so when we reach God, that's, the, I mean, it's pretty much instantaneous. And, and God judges the heart, a yeah, contrite heart um, versus the proud. Uh, contrite and loving heart tries to move towards God. And you begin that, you begin that journey here um, or you don't. And uh, if you don't, of course, we always rely on God's mercy, even from the greatest saints to the and monks and priests and 
patriarchs do the everyday orthodox. We say, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon us. Or, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Which was a prayer somebody prayed in the Bible, except the son, son of God, Son of David. That's kind of a view, that's basically our view of hell. Is everybody goes back to God. And uh, those without a contrite heart who are enemies of God will be in total torment. Those who aren't are, would be in ecstasy. Peace to you. May God save Serbia.